Hello and welcome to our latest TTT episode. In this episode, we are going to talk about implementing CI CD for mobile application development. This episode is a short tutorial for using Visual Studio App Center, a great tool with which you can build, test, deploy, and analyze the performance of mobile apps. So let's begin. If you've worked on production web projects in the past, you likely have experience with continuous integration and continuous delivery. Both CI and CD are elements of software development best practices. Setting up CI CD can be time consuming, even more for a mobile project. Understanding the basics of how to apply the CI CD practices in mobile application development to automate software release tasks will improve the performance. It will also free up time for you to spend on other activities that will add value to your business. When developing for the web, you push the code to the staging branch and it automatically goes to the staging server. But what about the mobile projects? If you are anything like me, you have probably just done it all by hand. You don't release that often anyways, right? But by setting up a CI CD system, you can ship updates more often and with nearly zero effort on your part and have them delivered instantly. To facilitate practices of CI and CD while developing mobile apps, Microsoft introduced a cloud platform named Visual Studio App Center that manages the complete mobile application development lifecycle. So let's talk about how to implement CI CD for mobile apps with Visual Studio App Center. Visual Studio App Center brings together multiple services commonly used by mobile developers. App Center can mainly be used to build, test, deploy and distribute applications. You can also view data analytics, conduct crash data diagnostics, ensure user authentication, and manage data synchronization. Visual Studio App Center can be used with many mobile app development technologies. On your screen, you can see a list of technologies that App Center currently supports. In your mobile app development journey, you first need to configure the source. App Center supports multiple source control providers such as Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. Once you connect a repository from any of these providers, you need to select a branch from the repository as the source for the build process. After this is done, we move on to build configurations. Because of the nature of how the App Center works, if you need both Android and iOS from the same code base, you will still need to create two separate apps, one for Android and the other for iOS. After a while, App Center will display the list of available branches from the appropriate repository that we set earlier. This is where the build can be configured. Hover on the branch, for example, master, and a gear icon will appear. Click on the gear icon to start tweaking its build configuration. Now let's explore some configurations on what the build feature is providing us. Build configuration depends on the technology and OS platform combination. For iOS applications, we will need to specify details like iOS SDK version, Xcode version, provisioning profile, and signing certificate. For Android, the required information would be mainly the Android SDK version number and key store details for signing. Now we'll explain the build configuration in a seven step process. The first step is build frequency. App Center provides two convenient options to start building the particular build. The first option is build this branch on every push. In this, as soon as a particular branch is updated, that is for any code which is pushed onto the branch that you have configured on App Center, App Center will automatically start to create a build using the source code of that branch. The second option is manually choose when to run builds. Step two, automatically increment build number. App Center allows developers to automatically increment the build number without checking on what the previous build number was. An important thing to remember is to check the box, automatically increment build number. This also eliminates a variety of possible headaches, such as being unable to install the app because the previous version is already there. Step three, run unit tests. The build configuration has a run unit test toggle switch that if enabled, runs all your unit tests using npm test. Cool, right? Step four, environment variables. App Center allows you to specify custom environment variables to use during the build process. Step five, sign builds. 
most likely your app needs to be tested and deployed to real devices. So make sure to configure the section called sign builds. For Android, upload the key store and don't forget to supply the password, key alias and other necessary things the app center might ask for. For iOS, upload the provisioning profile and the corresponding P12 certificate. Step 6. Test on real device. This switch, if enabled, will verify that your build works on a real device by running a launch test. And finally, step 7. Distribute. If you enable the distribute build switch and as soon as your build is successful, your build can automatically, without any human intervention, be released to a group of testers or to Google Play Store or App Store. Once that is done, you can click the save and build button and if you have set it up correctly, App Center will happily consume your source code and build the app. For a simple app, the build is quite fast. Android build takes 3 minutes while iOS build roughly needs 6 minutes. Building the app, however, is just the first step. Now it's the time to test it. So now let's move on to test configurations. App Center Test, also known as Test Cloud, is a test automation service for native and hybrid mobile apps. Tests written using supported frameworks can be run on hundreds of unique device models and operating systems, which are hosted in App Center's data center. You can start test runs using the App Center CLI or the public REST API. App Center stores test results, including media assets, up to six months for viewing. The screenshot you see on your screen depicts test runs which execute in a hosted fashion that uploads the necessary assets, typically an app binary and test files to execute tests in App Center's data center. Generated assets such as screenshots and device logs are kept for test reports. App Center test maintains a six month data retention policy for test report data. All test reports older than six months are removed. Test Cloud uses real mobile devices that aren't rooted or jailbroken, therefore providing the best approximation of your user's environment. App Center has provided support for more than 400 real-time devices. You can easily search and select the appropriate device from the search bar in the dashboard. So now you have built and tested your app. It's time to think about distribution. You can distribute your app either to an internal testing group or to the App Store or Play Store depending on the distribution strategy and platform. In the distribute section of the menu, group needs to be selected to create distribution group of internal testers. Alternatively, App Store or Play Store accounts can be connected from the stores menu. You can view your release history in the releases option under distribute. Here, you can track your releases as well as download any previous builds to compare any feature or module of your app. Now let's assume for a moment that you want to get the app to the hands of your QA team. From the same App Center console, go to Distribute, Groups and then create a new group, for example, Testers. In this group, add the email addresses of everyone who is supposed to help you with testing the app. Each of these people will receive an email invitation along with detailed instructions. Select the build you would like to distribute and follow the rest of the guided process. Everyone who is supposed to be enrolled in the group will get an email notification when a new build is released to them. Installing that build is as simple as clicking the install button in that email. Also, in case they want to go back and try some older builds of the app, they can sign into their App Center account and view the complete archive of the builds and choose the one they would like to install. This is very convenient as there is no need to hunt for that email attachment, older messages on Slack or other freeform notifications of those bills. Of course, it's important to remember that testers must have an App Center account to test the app. Now, as every developer familiar with iOS development can testify, getting a new member of the tester team to have their device provisioned is not always easy. Fortunately, the App Center simplifies this process for us. For every iOS tester, the iPhone or iPad can be provisioned at the click of a button. Simply go to Distribute, Groups, choose the group, and then go to the Devices tab. 
there is a register devices button waiting to be clicked. Even better, you can have the app center automatically provision the device. Click on the gear icon to open up the group settings and check the automatically manage devices option. Note that you still need to input the credential for the Apple ID of the Apple developer account. But after that, there is no need to manually provision every new device. It is very handy because when you expand the tester group to include new members, they can have their iPhones or iPads provisioned right away so that they can immediately run and test the app. Remember that you can simply connect to Google Play or to the App Store by providing your credentials and hand over the further application updating process to App Center. So why the application updating process? It is because the initial build of an application should be deployed from the respective store itself. App Center can manage your further application updating processes. Remember that diagnostics are also important. So now let's talk about diagnostics. App Center Diagnostics is a cloud service that helps developers monitor the health of an application, delivering the data needed to understand what happens when an app fails during testing or after release. The App Center Diagnostic SDK collects information about crashes and errors in your apps and uploads these mistakes to the App Center portal for analysis by the development team. This helps to eliminate the guesswork about what really happened in the app when it failed. When a crash occurs, App Center Crashes records the state of the app and device and automatically generates a crash log. These logs contain valuable information to help you fix the crash. So are there any limits to this? Yes. First, the maximum number of error properties per error is 20. When more than 20 properties are sent, the first 20 properties are processed and the rest are automatically dropped by the SDK. Second. The SDK truncates each property key and value to the first 125 characters. App Center displays the crashes and errors in one view under the Issues tab. You can filter these issues by crashes or errors by clicking the respective tabs. For all apps, you can filter the diagnostics data by app version, build number, time range and status. Click on a group to find more information such as list of specific reports, devices and OS versions affected. Now let's turn to analytics. App Center analytics will help you understand more about your app users and their behavior when using the app. Events. Events are a part of analytics. Events are actions that users take in your app. By tracking events in your app, you will learn more about your users behavior and understand the interaction between your users and your apps. Attaching properties to your events will provide you contextual information about the events. Tracking events in your app allows you to answer questions such as what are the top three pages of content viewed? What is the most like content? What type of files do my users send? To track custom events in your app, you can use App Center's Track Event API from the App Center's Analytics SDK. One of the major advantages of choosing Visual Studio App Center over other common providers for CI-CD is that apart from automated built-in deployment systems, it also provides a bouquet of other services like crash analytics, app usage analytics, push notification services and more. This makes Visual Studio App Center a one-stop shop for all mobile application development requirements. The ease of use that comes with the intuitive UI of the management console and feature richness make Visual Studio App Center the first choice for many mobile app developers. So we talked about how Visual Studio App Center is a great tool for all the steps involved in automating CI CD for mobile applications. Using Visual Studio App Center, the entire process from configuring the source, building and testing configurations and distributing the app becomes simplified. Visual Studio App Center also provides excellent diagnostic tools and analytics to ensure that your app is the best it can be. If you would like more information about Visual Studio App Center or how to use this tool for mobile application development, reach out to us at info at the rate Our tech experts will guide you through the entire process of mobile application development and give you valuable, customized guidance about your project. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, 
Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our video. Thanks for watching and that's it for this TTT episode.